Well, I hope you're having a great day. I'm glad to be here with you. Daniel 11.32 talks about in the end of time. It says the only secure source of strength and power will be and is the knowledge of God. Uh, you know, there's things that so we were moving something, uh, me and somebody from church this week. And I was, I wouldn't say I was the main mover. I would say I was the helper. And the main mover moved a bit more than I did. But in the moving, we were moving something real heavy. This is the wimpiest. Uh, that is a blood blister on my finger. And that I am even pointing, that, that I have the nature to point that out, says I am an actual wimp. I am a wimp. That is the smallest uh, blood blister. I kind of got squashed when I was moving something very, very heavy. Uh, very heavy. Now, you can kind of move something and say, well, you know, we want heaven to come down. We want, uh, Jesus said, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We often think of moving things that are on earth. We think of moving, I was moving something, I hurt my finger. I didn't have a lot of strength. That's probably compared to the person I was moving with. I am a wimp to even point it out. But when you want to move something on earth, moving something from heaven to earth, the will of God coming, that, that's a very different way of thinking. And in Daniel eleven thirty two, it talks about the only source of strength or secure source of strength and power is the knowledge of God. There's lots of sources of strength that aren't secure. Um, the reason I hurt my finger, ooh, this is wimpy, is because I was not a secure source of strength. My body did not have the strength to persevere to move the thing I was moving. Thus, this tiny, tiny wound that I'm actually referring to, which is actually very sad. It's not a secure, I didn't have a secure grip on something. And you can have lots of sources of strength. There's a lot of different sources of strength, but it's the only secure source of strength and power is the knowledge of God. That's what Daniel 11, 32 points out. Anything that is not rooted in God will be swept away, it says, at the end time, by the flood of evil. And I just, to, to, to know that information is maybe an important thing, to realize that no matter what I do, I'm my own strength is waning. I can't even move a rock very well. Uh, my security in strength has to come from the Lord. Second Corinthians three seventeen says, Now the Lord, now the now Lord, the Spirit is. Now this is right out of the Greek. Where now the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now there's nothing, the information here, uh, there's there's words added in that, but it doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll say exactly what it says. The now Lord, the Spirit is. Where now the Spirit of Lord is freedom. That's all it says. Where now the spirit of Lord, comma, freedom. It's really just a, an assertive, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom is how we say it, how it actually says it. Where now the spirit of Lord, freedom. That's what it says exactly. And not only is your source of strength in the Lord, but your source of, your. it's not a, just a technique of how to carry something would have done you better. Maybe for me, it would have, uh, I would have resisted getting the blood blister on my hand because I was moving something. But a secure source of strength for the heavy lifting, you also need to realize where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. The now Lord is the spirit, meaning uh, the Lord is the spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now, when we often look at stuff, we think, okay, there's heavy lifting, there's work, and the only source of real strength is uh, the Lord. That's where your strength or a secure source of strength can come from. A secure source of freedom also comes from that place. The Holy Spirit is calling a lot of us in our day uh, to kind of rearrange not relying on our own strength and learning to rely on him. And without that, these days we're going to be destitute. Romans 5.17 says, our task is to be co-rulers with Jesus. How on earth are you going to be a co-ruler with Christ 
and rule out of a non-secure source of strength. You can't. You can never fulfill Romans 5.17 without learning how the Lord is your strength and is your freedom. So you can't co-rule with Jesus if the Lord is not, if you don't have a secure source of strength, you can't rule. And it's an interesting thing. How am I going to fulfill co-ruling with Jesus? In my own strength, in my own words, in my own mind, in my own flesh, it ain't going to happen. Romans 5, 17. You are going to leave everything want being wanted if you try and rule and reign with Christ in your own flesh, in your own flexibility. You can't fix it in your own strength. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's also freedom. A lot of times, if you look at it and you say, well, how, how do I know if I'm ruling and reigning with Christ? Um, if I'm trying really hard, there's not often a freedom. Freedom comes when the Holy Spirit is there. So it's not some information. The knowledge of God, the relationship with God is the source of strength and is the source of freedom. And in that relationship, that's how you'll be able to rule. In a place that you're set free in your own not in your own self interest but you're set free in some ways yeah yes of your of yourself to a degree but you're set free by the spirit of the lord and you know sometimes when you're baking something or you're 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 sourcing something out um you know you say well how am i going to make this happen uh, where am i going to draw on to kind of complete the task or to to finish the, 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 the cause, this, this finishing of the cause comes, ruling with Christ comes through the Spirit of the Lord and through allowing the Lord to work in you and by you and through you. You can't rule and reign and fix anything without Jesus being in you and your source of strength. At the end times, the only secure source to do that through is through the Holy Spirit and through um, Jesus. It's, it's kind of an amazing thing. You can't rule through your own strength and you certainly can't fix or, or get to the place where you can figure out how you can do what that scripture says. Are you ruling and reigning with Christ? Um, Bible says that we are the only people on earth that have the weapons to change the course of history. Is that not interesting? Our weapons are not of this world. They're mighty in God to the tearing down of strongholds. In every instance that I face, whatever the stronghold is, it's not just living in the knowledge of God just gives you an easy life. There's going to be terribly strong things that you are going to have to reach, not in your own strength, but you're going to have to reach to the source of strength, which is the Lord the knowledge of God in particular, the revelation of who the Father is to you through Jesus, that knowledge of God is the source of strength. And anything not rooted in God in that way will be swept away, it says at the end times, in the flood of evil. I just, I know that this is a hard thing to kind of say, well, how does this play out practically in my life? Um, how am I going to rule and reign with the Lord in my own life? in my own flesh. You're not. You have to have the Lord revealed to you. Jesus has to choose to reveal the Father to you. And that will, how am I going to make it, in other words? That's how you're going to make it, that revelation of the Father. And that tearing down of strongholds, not just that you rule and reign in easy times, you do it when you're dealing with the most strong things that could oppose you, uh, that the enemy kind of has a condition and says, this is, a very, this is a very difficult thing that the enemy has put in place here, and I've got to tear this thing down. And the weapons of our warf warfare, this, how they work, they're mighty through God. Now, notice that scripture. Now, this is a point of teaching. The weapons of our warfare are not of this world, but they are mighty in God for the tearing down of strongholds. So notice, how are you going to rule and reign with Christ? through weapons that are not of your own making in your own flesh that you're strong, but they are weapons that are mighty in God. So that becomes very important to look at. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5 talks about this. How do these weapons, they're not interchangeable with our own likes or dislikes. They're not interchangeable with the way we'd like to make things work. 
we can't sub these weapons out and have the same effect as kind of uh, if you're in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the weapons of our warfare aren't going to get you out of that furnace. Only the Lord's going to get you out of there. Uh, not our own weapons, but the Lord's weapons. So things that are a deterrent to us, um, what are things that could deter you from trying to complete the task the Lord has? Well, strongholds, things that look impossible to deal with, things that are overcoming us in our own emotions. And you can't really fake overcoming these things. So you have to learn what the weapons of the Lord are. Number one, you have to pray. Number two, you have to have the revelation of who God is without a vision, a revelatory, relate, real vision of who the Lord is. Without that, you, you're you not going to make it to the place where you can tear down Satan's strongholds by your own being. You have to have the power of the Holy Spirit evident in you. Ephesians chapter, chapter 6, verse 12 talks about this a little bit as well. And you're not going to be free. You know, you can, you can kind of take over a situation because you're loud, because you're um, obnoxious, whatever, versus doing it with a gentle and kind spirit. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For I am gentle and humble of heart. Jesus, we rule and reign with Christ without kind of ruining our testimony of who Jesus is as, as the Son of God, loving mankind, doing it with a gentle and humble heart. How do you, Those aren't things we can put together uh, with what we see in the world today. Nobody rules and reigns that way. Well, you can. All things are possible through God. You can do that. Even though it's not like the world, it, 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 you reach a place in your own walk with the Lord where it's not because you're super spiritual, but where you just can't do it, but the, Jesus reveals the Father to you, and that that becomes the, the, the clincher, the knowledge of God. There's something really real in all of this that determines our destiny. Uh, we've looked at this, and I've looked at the essence of some of these concepts a few months ago, and I, this, I, I really did look at this quite uh, extensively. We talked about being a kingdom of priests. We've talked about um, being uh, in governing authority. We've talked about being a, rep, uh, a representative of, uh, as a prophet, so to speak, to your family, to your community, to the people around you. But I want to look one more time at a few little things about the source of strength as knowing God. Now, the redemption of Israel, Exodus 19, 1-6, Israel was redeemed out of Egypt and God brought her, being Israel, to himself. And it's not uh, just to doing kind of what God wanted them to do. He had this thing. Uh, he wanted to make an evidence that he could get them out of there. He brought them to him. So the relationship is the core of this thing. And how do you model this type of a, of a, of a relationship to other people? I wanted to look at about three things that we can do. Number one, ruling and reigning through Christ how that appears to other people. And there is an authority that comes from the, from the work of the Holy Spirit and from this scripture that Jesus said, he ascended on high, on high, took captivity captive, and gave gifts to men. Now, what's of interest to me here is there's always this concurrent theme in the Bible when Jesus ascended on high that people that were captive are set free. And how it looks to people is around you, people are set free. The number one thing to look for when you're ruling and reigning with Christ, number one, biblically that I can see, at least in the, it's not just, okay, I saw this kind of thing, Pastor Paul, you were talking about, uh, Abraham, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. It's not just that you see that the Lord has revealed something to you. But one of the evidence is people are set free around you. That is something. It's something else. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put in the fiery furnace. They were set free, so to speak, because uh, one that looked like the Son of God went in there with them. And time after time after time after time, 
something that doesn't settle in our mind rationally, just logically, why captives being um, set free are always a sign that this is that you're ruling and reigning with Christ. It always is in the Bible. There's always this concept that he set captivity captive. The people are set free when you're reigning. It, it really speaks to this very, very, very significant thing that's hard for us to get around in our heads, that there's a battle going on. And these verses, it says, the weapons of our warfare, that's a battle. So I don't want to, we, we, we don't, as Canadians, think of weaponizing as being a very good thing. But there's spiritually weapons when we pray, when we lead, one of the distinct things that happens is people are set free. And that is always biblically, it's very important to notice, that is usually tied together. together. Leading and ruling and reigning with Christ, somewhere along the line, people start getting set free from captivity. And that captivity in the Bible could be like, well, they're in Babylon or the people are in Egypt. But for us, it's it can be very distinct. People get set free of things that are controlling them. People get set free. So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And this is kind of what I want to close with. If the Lord is moving, if the Spirit of the Lord is there, people are going to get set free. That's exactly what it's saying. So it's really taken. Don't take this with a grain of salt. It's true. The Spirit of the Lord moving equals people will be get, getting free. They will get set free. Captivity will be taken captive. It's very important when you look at yourself to say, if the Lord is really moving in a situation, if God's really coming down, that will happen. People get set free of this, that, the other thing. The list could be as long as your arm of the things that they could get set free of, but they will get set free. Not the kind of freedom that comes by your own strength, but by the source of strength, which is the Lord. A secure source of strength. That finger of mine has a blood blister on it because I'm not that strong. And in leading anybody, I want you to just know, I'm telling you, if people are following the Lord, one of the defining features will be, if God is moving this way, people will get set free. And it's very important, not only set free of their own burdens, but it says, now, the now Lord, the Spirit is, where now the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So people will be set free when God moves this way. When he leads captivity captive, he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. That word gift is doma. It's where our word domain comes from. It doesn't mean leadership. It means like control that's God-given over situations dominion the dominion of canada our word dominion comes from this word domain doma that's where it comes from and it equates a type of power uh, that doesn't res resonate from within the individual out of the, their own strength it only comes because the lord releases it and it's not a challenge to you to say you know get on get get on your face or this that or the other it just says if you're functioning in some of these things, the way to really see it, it's not just the way to receive it, but the way to see it, is it really there is, are people getting set free? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be freedom. And that's what you want to enter into. So I'm going to actually close tonight. Everyone, that is what you want to enter into. You want to be that kind of person where around you, people are set free. That's the point. That is... That is to be not taken lightly. No source, your source of strength is secure in the knowledge of God so that you can continue to be free, set people free around you, not in your own strength, but in the fuel of the Holy Ghost in the Lord. And that's worth fighting for. So what's the fight about? Now, I didn't talk about the weapons, but what the fight's about is often setting people free. If you're listening to me, that is for you. Don't be forsaken from that promise in your own heart. Let's just pray tonight. Jesus, I pray that everyone that would be leading here would lead with this fire in their furnace to set to not that they could set people free, but where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is innately 
freedom. The captivity and the, the captivity will be led captive and people will be set free. And Jesus, I just in your name declare freedom for each individual watching, for every room that we're in. I praise your name for what you've done. And God, may you not be limited and may we not be limited by our own strength and our own dealings, but may we be fulfilled in the purposes and the plans of the Lord together. May heaven come down. May we enter into the fullness of what you have for us in each day, this week, and the days to come. We just adjust our, set our sights on something that you have for us, that people around me would be set free, not because of me, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And we unite our heart to this promise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. I'm sitting on my porch right now. It's been pouring rain out all day. I hope you're good. God's got a plan for you. Plan for what the Lord has in Jesus' name. Amen.